time, ladies and gentlemen. The playoffs are upon us. 16 drivers, 10 races, one champion. We're going to predict who will make it to the final four and who will become the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series champion and lift the Bill Friends Cup by November's end in Phoenix. Now, these are the 16 drivers. Chase Elliott won the regular season championship. He enters in with, I think, 2,040 points and a 33-point gap ahead of the cut line. Joey Logano plus 18, Chastain plus 13, Larson plus 12, Byron plus 7, Hamlin plus 6, as well as Ryan Blaney, Kevin Harvick plus 5, Reddick as well, Bell plus 4, his teammate Kyle Busch plus 3, and Chase Briscoe currently at the moment holds the final spot to transfer plus 2 ahead of Daniel Suarez, Bowman and Cindric minus 3, and Austin Dillon minus 4 below the cut line. Alright, so those are the 16 drivers. Here's a look at our predictions board. The first three races in the round of 16 all completely different in their unique style. The first race is, of course, the Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway, the very unique one third quad egg oval, egg shaped oval, however you want to call it. The track too tough to tame, usually produces very entertaining racing. Then next up, the, a normal one and a half mile track of Kansas Speedway, another track that provides very good racing. And then we end off with America's favorite racetrack, Bristol Motor Speedway for the night race at Bristol. This is quite honestly my favorite round three, completely unique, different style of racetracks. It's a great opening for the playoffs and it really gives an idea on who stacks up where because they're all three tracks that are completely different. And if you can be great at all three of them, you got a pretty good race car under your belt to chase for the championship. So let's start off automatically right off the bat. These drivers, Elliott, Larson, Harvick, Chastain, Hamlin, Blaney, Reddick, and Logano, Bam, you're all going to the round of 12 based off of pure speed and the buffer that they have. Um, I do believe that um, everything will work out pretty normally. I think they will be able to transfer. I'm not expecting any surprise spoilers in the round of 16 as like a, you know, a shocking winner. I'm not expecting much of that. You know, Darlington, it's a track that Joe Logano has won up before. And Joe Logano is a type of driver that excels at these types of specialty tracks. So yeah, I think he's going to have a good run there. Kansas, you know, I expect Toyotas to run very strong there as well as Chevrolets like Kyle Larson, who had a really good shot at winning at Kansas before losing it to Kurt Busch. And Bristol, Bristol, again, I, it's going to be, a, even though we don't have any experience with the next gen car at Bristol under, you know, concrete conditions, I just don't see Bristol being a type of track that will produce a surprise winner. So, yeah, those drivers I have automatically moving on. Now, the drivers that I have being eliminated out of, right off the bat, Austin Dillon and Chase Briscoe. Now, Austin Dillon, he was in based off of his win last weekend at Daytona, but outside of that, he's done barely anything to make his way into the playoffs. I don't think he has the speed. I know they're going to bring up 2020 because Dillon had a fantastic round of 16 run in 2020, but I, we just have, I haven't seen any speed. All year long, the eight car has always been the A side at RCR. And I just don't see Austin Dillon being able to make it to the round of 16 based off of pure speed. Same thing with Chase Briscoe. He had real good speed at the beginning, but since then, he has completely fallen off. I mean, he has the worst average finish in the last 10 races compared to the other 15 drivers in the playoffs and have scored the third least average amount of points out of anyone in the last 10 races that are in the playoffs. So when you have stats like that, I'm sorry, I, I don't have much confidence in you making it into the round of 12. So uh, Dylan, Briscoe, they're out. So now we have six drivers, four spots to go. Now, the other two I have advancing is teammates Kyle Busch and Christopher Bell, but barely. Kyle Busch in the last 10 races hasn't been all that good. He's had an 18.2 average finish, which is the fifth worst out of the playoff drivers in the last uh, 10 races. But to be fair, a lot of incidents weren't his fault. You know, he, he did have some races that he was just flat out horrible in. I mean, the last 10 races, he has only finished inside the top 10 twice, Daytona and Richmond, a ninth place finish there. But like I said, there are some races where he was flat out bad, like New Hampshire. He was just awful. Uh, Watkins Glen in the second half, he fell off. I don't know exactly what, what happened with him there. But there are some races where it was just out of his control, like Michigan was just caught up in a crash. Uh, Pocono, where he finished second, but was disqualified. So there's a lot of factors that go into Kyle Busch's stats that run so poor. Uh, Kyle Busch is in a situation where the results don't show, the they don't tell the full story. I think Kyle Busch and that 18 team, they're going to get it wrapped around eventually, and I think they're going to advance based off of, they do have speed, and they do have the driver of Kyle Busch. 
they will advance into the round of 12. Same thing with Christopher Bell. You know, now Christopher Bell's team, they haven't been all that consistent, but they do have some good momentum. They won at New Hampshire earlier in the year. They followed up with a sixth place at Pocono, a second at Richmond, and an eighth at Watkins Glen. They have run well at completely different racetracks, which is very key if you want to advance into the round of 12 with the round of 16. Tracks that are extremely different in each of their own way. And he's finished inside the top 10 in the earlier races. He finished sixth at Darlington and fifth in Kansas. So he's got the speed. He knows how to run well. So I got those two advancing, but just barely based off of the lack of consistency, which leaves four drivers for two spots available in the round of 16. The four drivers we have left, William Byron, his teammate, Alex Bowman, Daniel Suarez, and rookie Austin Sindrick. And I'm actually going to give the spots to Daniel Suarez and Austin Sindrick. I have those two drivers advancing into the round of 12. Now with Daniel Suarez, he has been all right. Has it been the best? Has it been the worst? He's been all right in the middle. But when you compare him to the other drivers I have left available of Byron, Bowman, uh, uh, Briscoe, and Austin Dillon, I mean, Suarez is much better. Maybe not miles better, but he has run consistently better than those other four drivers that I've mentioned, at least in recent weeks. I mean, Suarez has scored more top fives, more top tens, has had a better average finish, and has scored more points, or at least collected an average amount of points over the last 10 races than, you know, Sind or than uh, Bowman and Byron. I think the playoffs, even though we have to consider a lot of things about overall in the season, we also have to consider about momentum, what they've done as of late. Sindrick has been surprisingly, he's been very quiet these last 10 races. I mean, uh, three top fives, uh, five top tens, and a 13.0 average finish. He doesn't collect a lot of points. In fact, he has one of the lowest average amount of points gained out of anyone in the playoffs in the last 10 races, but he knows how to position his car for the finish. Whereas if you compare that to the Hendrick drivers of Bowman and Byron, Bo Byron's last top 10 finish. Keep in mind, he started out the season with two wins, Atlanta and Barnesville. Started out the season very good. But his last top 10 finish, you have to go all the way back to late June in Sonoma. Sonoma. And th that's a while back. That was the last time B Byron has finished inside the top 10. Since then, he has had some top 12 finishes, but overall, the team is just nowhere near where it was at the beginning of the year. Same thing with Alex Bowman. Started out the year strong with his win at Las Vegas, but in the last 11 races, one top 10, a ninth place at Michigan. I mean, I know Sindrick and Suarez haven't been consistent, but they have been less inconsistent and more just overall has performed better than Byron and Bowman. I know it may seem shocking that I'm putting Hendrick teammates out in the round of 16, but when you look at the stats and you look at the tracks coming up, I just don't see it. Now, if Martinsville was round of 16, then maybe I'd put Byron in the round of 12, but outside of that, I see no reason to put Byron and Bowman in the round of 12. So I have Byron, Bowman, Austin Dillon, and Chase Briscoe out in the round of 16. All right, next up is the round of 12. On the round of 12, again, just like the round of 16, each track is unique in its uh, own shape of way. Uh, Texas. Talladega, 2.66 miles super speedway. And then we have the very always entertaining Charlotte Roval to cap off the round of 12. Now, um, right off the bat, let's get rid of the drivers that are, I think are going to be advancing. Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, Kevin Harvick will advance to the round of eight. Denny Hamlin and Ryan Blaney. Um, I, always, I feel like Kevin Harvick. I feel like Kevin Harvick and that four team, they are hitting it at the right time. With that four car now the two drivers i have first out and it may surprise some people i have daniel suarez and his teammate ross chastain i have them out in the round of 12. now numerous factors number one track house started off great they were the team to beat especially ross chastain who quickly earned two races uh, at coda and talladega now i think daniel suarez is going to be out in the round of 12 based off of just pure speed i think he's good but not good enough to make it to the round of eight but with chastain it's a different story i think y'all know where i'm going with this chastain as we know it's him against the entire nascar garage he has had confrontations with I mean, you can probably count them more in one hand. I mean, he's had that many issues with so many different drivers. Now, some are more serious than others. Like, for example, uh, Chastain and Truex, that battle's not as severe. They had their moment at Dover uh, earlier in the year in May, but not that serious. But then you have other drivers like Danny Hamlin. I'm pretty sure I don't need to explain their history. 
Chase Elliott, maybe. I mean, he did have that issue with him at Gateway. Kyle Busch got taken out by Chastain and outright said in an interview in Daytona that there's a lot of drivers that are going to be paying back Chastain. They're just waiting for the right moment. Now, they could wait to the round of A to ensure that he doesn't affect the championship, or they could possibly do it in the round of 12. Again, Trackhouse is not where they once were at the beginning of the year. I feel like a lot of teams now, I feel like certain drivers from Hendrick Motorsports, certain drivers from the Toyota camp at Joe Gibbs Racing are now hitting it at the right time from Stuart Haas and Kevin Harvick. Those drivers are hitting it at the right time. Trackhouse, they hit it at the beginning of the year. And around halfway, after Daniel Suarez's win at Sonoma, they haven't been the same. They haven't been where, where they once were at the beginning of the year. That, you know, is the reason why I believe Suarez will be out. But with Chad saying, it's a combination of that, and I think some drivers are going to be paying him back. That's why I have those two out in the round of 12. Which leaves Redick, Logano, Cindric, Bush, and Bell left to go. Now, Redick... I have him out in the round of 12. Now, it's not his fault. There's nothing to do with him. It's just the equipment that he's in. You can only carry a car and a team for so long. RCR is not a championship level team. They will never be a championship level team, at least in the short term. And Tyler Reddick, when he goes to 23-11 racing, he will be a championship contender in, in somewhere down the line. But I don't think he can do that at RCR. Now, he does have the Roval, which is why... I have him out, but it's a light red. He does have the Charlotte Roval to his advantage. He has won the last two road course races, one at Road America and one at the Indy Road Course. So we know he can get the job done turning left and turning right. However, you cannot bank on just the road courses if you want to advance into the championship. Obviously, with this win and you're in BS, he can do that. If he wins, he advances to the round of eight. But I do think while Reddick will run really good at the Charlotte Roval, He's got Chase Elliott, the the road course king, or at least I, we should say Prince, because I don't know if he's beaten Gordon's record yet for most road courses. So we'll call him the Prince, road road course Prince right now. And it comes to the playoffs and the Charlotte Roval. Chase Elliott has been dominant at the Charlotte Roval. He has won, I think, the last three. He's won 2020, 21, the last two Charlotte Roval races. And he's been picking up momentum back up on the road courses, ran extremely well at Watkins Glen and should have won that race if he didn't make that decision to go on the high lane and allow Larson win but I feel like while there is a strong chance I can't bank on Reddick winning the Roval and that's why I have him out in the round of 12 but just based on the car the equipment nothing to do with him himself so Logano Cindric Bush and Bell they are next up now I have Logano advancing I have Logano advancing to the round of eight and I have Kyle Busch but Kyle Busch he it's it's a light green I'm not confident, but I think based off of talent-wise, Kyle Busch will make it. The part that I'm worried about is the Roval because Toyota collectively has been horrible on the road courses. I mean, they have shown zero speed. Well, Kyle Busch should say, this shows some speed at Watkins Glen, but outside of that, Toyota has just been nowhere near where they were before in years past on the road courses. And that's one thing that I'm worried about. Kyle Busch doesn't have a big cushion right now i know i'm going by the playoff grid but he comes into the playoffs just plus three plus three i don't see him winning any of the three races in the round of 16 i think he will advance but i think he will advance pretty low on the grid and i worry talladega it's such you know it's such ah it's such a a, a mystery it's a it's a it's a russian roulette type of race that i can't guarantee or i can't bank on bush having a good finish texas would be his best shot to have a good run. Talladega, you can pray, but you can't bank on that. And the Charlotte Roval, Toyota has just never been good there. And Kyle Busch himself hasn't been good at the Roval. I mean, he's had an average finish of 25.8. In the four races we have competed at the Charlotte Roval, he has only finished one time. Fourth place finish, which was last year, but 32nd, 37th, and 30th were his previous races. Combine that, when you combine his not-so-good record at the Roval with Toyota struggling on the road courses, it's, it, I'm telling you, it's barely, I have him advancing, but barely, barely. Uh, I just think he's, Kyle Busch is going to advance based off of talent. And I think Texas is going to be his best chance to at least maybe bank a win or have some type of good run to give him somewhat of a cushion 
when they enter into the Roval. Now, Joe Logano, we know how good he can be uh, at super speedways like Talladega, and he has a really good record. He has the third best average finish out of anyone at the Charlotte Roval. 10th, 10th, 2nd, and 7th were his races. Average finish combining to a 7.3. So he runs extremely well and consistent at the Roval. Now, when you take a look at road courses in general, hasn't been that great. A third and a sixth place finish, but you compare that to 31st or 31st, 17th, and a 27th so far in his career in 2022 on the road courses. Again, talent wise, I think Team Penske. They could build up, back up some momentum. Austin Cindric has been running much better as of late. I think that 22 team can get the ball rolling talent-wise and team-wise to be able to advance into the round of eight, which leaves us between two drivers, Austin Cindric and Christopher Bell. Now, these two drivers, I feel like have had very similar run-ups to the playoffs. Both have run the same average finish and have scored the same amount of points in the last 10 races leading up to the playoffs. So we know how good Austin Cindric is on the road courses. He is miles better than Chris Bell in terms of results. And even on the large ovals, Cindric slightly, slightly is better than Chris Bell. Has a slightly better average finish. He has run better, but just barely when you look at the large ovals like Texas. So you consider those factors in, they're similar. They're very similar in terms of the large ovals, Talladega, Outlier, we're not gonna include that. When you take a look at the Charlotte Roval, you give the advantage to Austin Cindric. But when you take a look at momentum, it kind of balances out. That's why I think this is so difficult to pick between Cindric and Bell, because when you take a look at their runs this season, they're kind of similar. They both had flashes of moments, both have had not so good periods of time throughout the season, and, uh, as of late, they've had some good momentum on their side. So it's pretty even to compare the two. But I am going to give the advantage to Christopher Bell based off of experience. I know the Charlotte Roval, but again, we got Chase Elliott there that can hold you from winning that, uh, winning at the Roval. But I think Bell, being at Joe Gibbs Racing, much more experience. I think experience is going to pay off. So I got Bell advancing to the round of eight, but just slightly over Austin Cindric, which leaves us with eight. Larson, Elliott, Hamlin, Harvick, Bell, Blaney, Logano, and Kyle Busch in the round of eight with the most tame round in the playoffs, two one and a half mile tracks and a short track, Las Vegas and Miami. And we ended off with Martinsville. And judging by how awful Martinsville was back in April, I am very scared for what Martinsville is going to be like in even colder conditions uh, here in uh, the fall. So, But hey, Miami, Las Vegas, the Mountain have, have been really great with the next-gen car, provided some fantastic racing, so we could have a very entertaining round of eight. All right, so let's start off with the drivers I think are going to be eliminated. We're going to do reverse. We're going to go off with the drivers that I think are going to be eliminated. I think the Penske drivers of Blaney and Logano, they're out in the round of eight. I don't think they have the speed to be part of the championship four. Um, even though Ryan Blaney has been very consistent and been in the top five in the regular season standings, I don't see them being championship contenders this year. Same thing with Joey Logano. But the drivers I do feel like will be ready for the championship, Hendrick teammates, Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, and Denny Hamlin will advance to the championship four. Larson Elliott, I think that's been a guarantee for a lot of drivers. I feel like Denny Hamlin, even though he hasn't been the best like the ones that we've seen in 2021 2020 2019 he hasn't been that dominant when you compare him to the other playoff drivers he is certainly one of the best he's going to the championship four in phoenix so we have three drivers that are in larson elliott hamlin blaney logano are out as well as christopher bell he's out i don't see him just having the speed to be able to contend for the championship four which leaves us two drivers one spot kevin harvick and Kyle Busch. Now these two drivers are some of the best in our sport, Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch. However, when you take a look in terms of momentum leading into the playoffs, Kevin Harvick has just flipped a switch. He has dramatically been, just he's been flat out better than Kyle Busch. Even though Kyle Busch has had his issues, Harvick just been better based off of pure speed nonetheless. Harvick did win two races. He scored three top fives and five top tens. He has the fourth best average finish with a 13.3 and has scored the fifth amount of average points out of anyone in the playoffs with a 28.6. Now, you compare that to Kyle Busch, zero wins, one top five, three top tens, 18.2 average finish, and have only earned just around 26 in average points. And even in the driver rating, the driver rating, Harvick beats Kyle Busch, not by much, 87.24 for Harvick, 79.49 
for Kyle Busch. Not only that, but when I looked up all the ovals, so not only your traditional mile and a half, but your unique uh, over one mile tracks like Darlington, Nashville, those types of intermediate-ish to mile and a half racetracks, guess who has the best average finish? It's Kevin Harvick, 8.3, which is better than anyone out of anyone in the Cup Series. He has that win at Michigan, th- uh, three top fives and five top tens in eight starts. So we've competed in eight of these intermediate mile and half style ovals. In eight starts, he's finished inside the top uh, 10 five times with a win at Michigan. His average running position in those eight races are better than Kyle Busch. Harvick, 13.3. Busch has a 15.6. The only thing Kyle Busch beats Kevin Harvick in is his driver rating. Busch has an 89 uh, Kevin Harvick is an 85.6, so he does have that bit of an advantage, but when you look at momentum, when you look at the tracks coming up, you got to look at Kevin Harvick. Now, even Martinsville. Now, Martinsville, Kyle Busch did finish better than Kevin Harvick. Kyle was 7th, Harvick 14th, but when you take a look at their average running position, Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch ran basically around the same area. Kevin Harvick was a 10.7. Kyle Busch had an average running position of 12.4, so Harvick was generally running better than Kyle Busch in this race, just like Kyle Busch had a better finish. Again, sometimes results don't tell the full story. So yeah, it's a real back and forth between Bush and Harvick, but I'm giving the advantage to Kevin Harvick. Even for the season he's had, I feel like that 14, they are hitting it at the right time. He's going to Phoenix, and your championship four will be two Chevys, a Ford, and a Toyota. Teammates from Hendrick Motorsports, Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson. Ford driver from Sewer House Racing, Kevin Harvick, and from Toyota, and Joe Gibbs Racing, Denny Hamlin. Now, when you talk about Phoenix, you, of course, have to talk about Kevin Harvick. He is the master at Phoenix. Nine wins in 39 races, an 8.7 average finish, 18 top fives, and 28 top tens, over 1,600 laps led and you have to consider the fact that he was the best average fin or best finish i should say out of my championship four finishing six back in march however we have to consider the fact that kevin harvick lately at phoenix has not been the same i do mention he has won eight times or nine times i should say at phoenix but his last win, you have to go all the way back to March of 2018. Since his win in March of 2018, Kevin Harvick has only led 141 laps. Now, he's been in the top 10. He has finished in the top 10 since his win, but it hasn't been that type of domination that we expect at a track like Phoenix. In fact, in the last four races he's competed in Phoenix, he's only led one lap. That's it. It's one lap. Three of the four, he didn't even lead a single lap, which is uncommon Uh, at Phoenix for Kevin Harvick. Now you have to consider that all four drivers are pretty evenly stacked up heading into Phoenix. All four have won. In fact, Larson won the last race and Chase Elliott won the race prior. So they've all been to victory lane recently. In fact, Denny Hamlin won, I think, in November 2019. All have won extremely recent. And another interesting fact, if you look at the top four drivers that I have for my championship four and you look at who has the best average finish at Phoenix, Kevin Harvick has the best. Hamlin has the second best, Elliott has the fourth best, and Larson has the fifth best. So all four pretty evenly stacked up when it comes to the competition at Phoenix. So as who would get the edge, you can't really go based off just this one race. Now, when you take a look at the season as a whole, you look at a driver like Chase Elliott, regular season champion, has been on the money for majority of the season. Larson has been lingering in the background. He's had moments, he's had flashes, but hasn't been that dominant Larson like what we saw last year. Kevin Harvick, he's turned it up. Though, you know, since Michigan, he has been on the money, him and that four team leading up into the playoffs. Denny Hamlin, pretty inconsistent. He will have runs where out of nowhere, he'll just have a very fast car. And then he'll have moments where he's not so good. So yeah, with Hamlin, pretty inconsistent. But when it comes to the playoff time, Hamlin is going to be on it. So this makes this championship four very difficult to pick. I really don't know who to choose from. All four, I think, are very evenly uh, stacked up. I would give the advantage to Chase Elliott Elliott because he is the regular season champion. He has been consistent throughout the entire year. But then again, you have to make a case for the other three. Harvick, been on it as of recently. Denny Hamlin, he can come out of nowhere and finally take it. He's got the drive. He's got the hunger. Same thing with Kyle Larson. He wants to go back to back. All four drivers have a very strong case for why they think they can win the championship. But as much as I am for the old guys, I always want the old guys to win. I want Harvick to get in the championship. I want Hamlin to finally break through and win his first championship. I don't see it happening. I think it's going to come down between teammate Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson. 
And I know after 2020, I'm still having flashbacks of the regular season champion, not even making it to Phoenix. I think this is Chase Elliott's year. I think he has the perfect combination of consistency, speed, and winning. That's the thing. He can win and he can finish top five, top 10. Uh, he already has a 33 point buffer, which that can help him greatly advance into those final rounds. Runs really good at Phoenix. I mentioned Kevin Harvick's, you know, the last time he won was in March of 2018. Uh, Chase Elliott has a slightly better average finish than Kyle Larson. He's more complete of a driver and more complete of a team. Uh, not only just based in Phoenix, but I think just overall in the entire year. Again, Larson, they've had moments. They've had flashes. You know, Watkins, I understand he, when he won at Watkins Glen, he hadn't been this good since maybe Kansas, I feel like, was the last time where we saw Larson be very competitive. Outside of that, it's been a very up and down. It's been a roller coaster year. I don't think that's going to work for the championship, especially when you're going up against a guy like Chase Elliott with how consistent he has been so far in 2022. So I have him winning the championship and will be a two-time cup champion. But yeah, that's my predictions for the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. Who do you have advancing? Who are your first four out? Who do you have advancing to the championship for? And who do you have taking home the title November in Phoenix? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Until next time, my name is Jed from MDK. Thanks for watching.